this comes at a great time because our next, our, our next series is going to be about love and, uh, and a bit about marriage. And so our next speaking series will be about that. But today we're focused on epiphany. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about epiphany today. Our call to worship this morning is from Matthew. You want to stand with me and let's hear God's word? Matthew chapter 2, starting in verse 10, reading in Jesus' name. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. You see, the, the day that the church traditionally remembers as Epiphany is a day in which they celebrate people coming to see Jesus and having this awakening, this realization that, that this baby who they're seeing is the Son of God, the Savior. And, and it's our prayer today that each of us will have an epiphany uh, in, in, in coming to see Jesus. Let's worship the Lord together. Epiphany is about seeing, and, and in that seeing, that seeing, what, what we see, having an impact on us that, that transforms both the way we see ourselves as well as the way we see, you know, just reality and, and, and what's going on around us. Our scripture reading today comes from 1 John chapter 3, starting in verse 1, reading in Jesus' name. See. See what kind of love the Father has for us? That we should be called the children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world doesn't know us is that it didn't know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when He appears, we will be like Him. Because we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is. This is, this is God's word for us today as we, as we come before God and as we come before him to worship that, that God would help us to see Jesus for who he is. Amen? Amen. Epiphany is not really a word that we use very often. Occasionally we will, and uh, we'll use the word epiphany in one sense, but it's not part of our everyday life. And that's probably because epiphany is maybe not necessarily an everyday occurrence. Uh, so I decided that I'd look up the definition of epiphany. Epiphany comes from the Greek word epiphania, and then Latin, translated into Latin, and then into Old, Old English, and then it tr gets translated into English as epiphany. And if it is capitalized, it's talking about today, a day in which uh, the church celebrates um, the wise men uh, coming, to, coming to Jesus, the, the call to worship that we read. And at seeing Jesus, they just immediately fall down and worship. It also means epiphany, an appearance or manifestation, especially of the divine. Or epiphany, 
an unusual, a, a usually a sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature or meaning of something. An intuitive grasp of reality through something, such as an event or usually a simple and, and, and something that's striking, or an, an illuminating discovery or realization or disclosure, a revealing scene or a moment. In, in all of these cases, epiphany really comes from seeing and then being transformed, either our spirit being transformed or our understanding being transformed or something along those lines because it's the seeing that then brings about a change or a realization. Epiphany. My hope, my prayer, is that as we hear God's word, each and every one of us will have a bit of an epiphany today that, that, that we'll see Jesus through the power of God's word and that our lives, our faith, our, our understanding of reality would be transformed. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 22, or it's going to be right up here. Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 22, reading in Jesus' name. Because it's God's word, not mine. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem, that's Jesus, to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, Exodus, um, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, set aside or, you know, or, or dedicated and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. This is the smaller offering. A wealthier family would have, would have brought a lamb, but a poorer family was allowed to bring just, just a couple of birds. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you've prepared in the presence of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was, what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, behold, the child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess named Anna, the daughter of Phenuel and of the tribe of Asher, and she was advanced in years. And it just means she's old. And having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. Well, 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 let's not call 84 old. She did not depart from the tem temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him, that's Jesus, to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Here ends the reading of God's word. Epiphany. You see, at just that right time, God was doing something absolutely amazing. Right? Because Jesus, Jesus you know, is being, he's just, he's just newborn. He's just a few days old. And, and Mary and Joseph are just doing what they're supposed to do. They're doing the normal stuff. They say, have a baby, you go up to Jerusalem, you offer your offering, and everything's all good because, you know, the firstborn of everybody, 
belongs to the Lord. And so that's what they're doing. They're doing normal stuff. This is not an extraordinary thing. This is normal. Got your baby, go up, give your offering. And so it's a, it's a kind of a normal day uh, for, for Joseph and Mary and, and, and Jesus. He's just, he's just been born, carried along. But at just the right time, a guy named Simeon, a guy who loves the Lord and, 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 is, and, and follows the Lord, who is filled with the Holy Spirit. This is Holy Spirit stuff. Remember, we believe in God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is doing something absolutely amazing and totally transforming this dude's life. He's being filled with the Holy Spirit. He's being moved by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has even revealed to him, hey, you're not going to die. You're, this is, I mean, we don't know much about death. Most of us don't know when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. But Simeon gets a message from the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, that he will not see death until he sees the Lord's salvation. And that very day, I wonder what day of the week it was. It doesn't say. I just wonder what day it was. The Holy Spirit just wakes up Simeon. And says, hey, Simeon, today's a good day to go up to the temple. And he he gets up, and he goes to the temple, just filled with the Holy Spirit, knowing that God is leading him. It's like, something's going to happen. God's God's leading him. And then he gets to the temple, and who does he see? Jesus. But he doesn't call him Jesus, because he doesn't know his name. He just... It's the Lord's salvation. When he sees Jesus, he sees salvation. It's, it's got to be weird, though, for like Mary and Joseph. Is Jessica in here? No? Cool, because I'm going to tell a story about her. Hey, Jess, this one's for you. So about two years, <laughs> Jess usually worships, worships with us, and uh, she's here on a lot of Wednesdays. And, um, and a couple of years ago, her, um, her, her son, Grady, was in, um, uh, was, was in our daycare center. And so I get to know the kids pretty well. We get, to, we get to hang out. My job, Renee loves it, my job is to come down to the daycare and rile them all up and then leave. So much fun for me <laughs> and the kids. Sometimes I'll read books and everything else. And so a couple of years ago, Jess comes to worship with us for the first time. And they no sooner get through that door when Grady just runs through the, the atrium and just latches on. And I pick him up and I give him this big, huge hug. And I had never met Jess before. And Jess got this look in her eye like, with really big eyes, like, who is this guy picking up my kid? And then all of a sudden, like, Grady calls me Pastor Jay, and then slowly Jess has this realization, like, oh, Grady knows him. That's good. I don't know him. That's weird. I mean, it's weird with like your little children come up and hug a grown man who you don't know. And, and it's just kind of weird. And I bet you Mary and Joseph felt the exact same way when like all of a sudden, like Simeon's walking through the temple bah, 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 and just like grabs a kid and, says, and then starts saying weird things like, I can die now. Mary and Joseph might be like, not now, you're holding baby Jesus. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine just like, you know, like kind of growing up, at least I know you. Yeah, I know. It's not, my, it's not my first time grabbing her and walking around. But can you imagine some stranger just walking through the temple, filled with the Holy Spirit, just grabbing somebody's kid and saying, I can die now. And then as he looks at your baby... He says, for I have seen salvation. 
Not you, Jesus. <laughs> You're awesome. Still not Jesus. <laughs> I know. It's so sweet. And then Simeon talks all about Jesus and what Jesus is going to do to be the Savior of all of us. Because that's his purpose. It's his life. Hey, cutie. And then Simeon tells Mary, everything's going to change because of Jesus, because of this child, because he's going to bring salvation, and yet it's also just going to be complete, in, incredibly divisive. Many are going to rise. Many are going to fall. Even your own heart is going to be completely pierced. And Mary and Joseph are just totally blown away as they come face to face with the reality that God is moving through the power of his Holy Spirit, that other people know that this little baby in their arms is the Son of God. And that's a Holy Spirit thing because God is doing something. And then just at that moment, in comes an older lady. Is that fair? 84? Can we, can we go older lady with 84? Advanced in years is what it says in the Scripture. And all of a sudden, she's filled with the Holy Spirit, and she starts to prophesy, and she starts to tell them and everybody who will listen about who Jesus is and what kind of impact he's going to have on the whole world. That's epiphany. Epiphany is seeing Jesus and worshiping like the wise men. It's seeing Jesus immediately shouting about salvation that could only come from God. It's seeing Jesus and saying, this kid, this one is going to change the world. It's seeing Jesus and recognizing when we see Jesus through the power of his word that we get changed too. Because as we see Jesus and as we believe in Jesus that he is salvation, we change. Our faith changes. Our, our concept of reality changes. The Holy Spirit floods into us like it did with Simeon. And the Holy Spirit then will lead and guide us just as it did with Simeon. If you're feeling a tug that today, get out of bed, let's go to church. That's the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, okay, little known fact. I'm going to say almost every Sunday, I'm in here praying with the, with the band before, before they practice. Praying that the Holy Spirit would fill this place. Praying that the Holy Spirit would pull people in who need to hear his word and be saved. That's praying for Holy Spirit epiphany. And we're doing it every Sunday. So I got... Good news and bad news for you. If you're feeling that tug on a Sunday morning, it's kind of our fault, but mostly the Holy Spirit. Because we're praying for you. We're praying for you that you get the opportunity to hear God's word. It's not about me and it's not about them singing. It's just about God and what he's done for us. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit, uh, you know, directs attention and glory to God. Jesus is the salvation that we need. We need Jesus. And the salvation that only he can give. And the epiphany that when we see Jesus, we see salvation. We need that epiphany every day. We need that change in awareness that our life isn't just about me and my comfort and my selfish desires or whatever I think that I'm doing good for other people. It's not about me. We need that epiphany that as we see Jesus, we see salvation. And we give glory to him, just like Simeon, just like Anna, just like those wise men. That's an epiphany. And that's what we need. My hope, my prayer, is that every time you open God's word, 
whether it's on your iPad or whether it's in a, somebody hold up a Bible, you know, or it's, yeah, there you go. If it's in, you know, a book or if it's like this or if it's on your phone, you know, and if you're trying to figure out, hey, I don't have a Bible at home, but I want a Bible app, please come talk to me, talk to Eric, you know, talk to one of the guys who is serving communion. We would all love to point you in a direction so that you can have God's word at your fingertips anytime. And as you look at God's word and as you see Jesus, it's our prayer that you would see that Jesus is salvation. He is the salvation that we need. And he brings about this transformation so that we see, believe things differently based upon him and what he's done for us. It's like holding baby Jesus saying, I can die now. I'm good. Let's pray. God, you're awesome. And and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for loving us. and Thank you for sending your son. Lord Jesus, thank you for agreeing to God's plan that you together created this plan and you humbled yourself to being born as a baby. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word that, that, that helps us to see you, Jesus, that you are our salvation. And then we pray, Lord God, that we would each have an epiphany, that we would see you and be transformed. Our life, our faith, our eternity. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Amen.